Hello and welcome to Horror and Monster Collectibles where today we are going to be taking a look at my collection. This is uh, going to be an updated video. Uh, it's been a while since my last collection video and there's been a few changes so I figured I'd show you guys an update. Uh, real quick off the bat, uh, some questions that I get often on my other collection videos is uh, one would be the main one is uh, whether stuff in the kitchen gets messed up from cooking and things like that. It doesn't because I don't cook. Uh, I'm a terrible cook. I've always been a terrible cook. So the kitchen doesn't get used for that. Um, but I am overgrown. I don't want my stuff in the kitchen, but it's kind of, I don't have any other place to put it. Uh, I'll be buying a house next year where I'll have a nice collection uh, room set up and I'm excited for that. But right now I have to kind of deal with the space that I have, which is limited for sure. Uh, Two would be, do people freak out when they come over? Sometimes, but I try to give them a heads up uh, about, you know, what it's like over at my house. If you don't like horror movies or stuff scares you, you're not going to like it over here. And I try to be as upfront about that as possible. Um, another question I get is, is moving a pain? And yes, moving is a pain. And I really don't look forward to moving, but it will be nice to get everything situated in one place where I don't have to ever worry about moving again. So I am excited about that. And then uh, really like the main question I get and, and the way that I feel like I can help out most people is any tips on getting started collecting? And yes, there are a few. Uh, one being only buy what you feel like you can't live without. Uh, if you kind of have, if it's just like okay feeling about it, don't get it. Only get stuff that you absolutely love I'm guilty of not doing this and I'm actually purging stuff that I don't absolutely love here in a couple weeks. And uh, you know, don't let other people influence you on what you buy for your collection. Uh, it's your collection, not theirs. If you love something and other people don't seem to like it, so what? Do your thing. I do my thing. I try not to be influenced by other people telling me I should get this or I shouldn't get this. It's my stuff and I like my stuff. And then the, the last thing on that is, is don't get into debt collecting. Uh, only buy what you can afford. Um, if you can't afford a piece, then just save up for it and then buy it, but don't get into debt doing this. These are not necessities. This is just things you know that I'd like to have, uh, but it's not as important as paying bills. So I know that's a long intro, but let's start looking at things. All right, first off, we're going to start off with Darren Holtz 2018 Myers bust, which he did a killer job on this. This is a life-size bust, and I absolutely love it. Over here is Sideshow's Quarter Scale Jungle Hunter maquette, and this is the EX version with a hand holding the trophy. I like it, but... Uh, I don't love it, so I'm gonna sell it off. I've got the P1 piece on order and I'll be getting that instead. Over here we have Cinema Cats Marcus. This is a one-third scale statue. Um, Marcus from Underworld. And uh, I love it. It is an amazing, amazing piece. And then over here we have their one-third lichen to match it and they did such a killer job on this the whole diorama is just so badass I freaking love it it's one of my favorite pieces over here we have PCS's quarter scale the howling wolf and this is a repaint that I did uh, it came pretty flat, so I decided to repaint it, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And I love the statue, and I love the movie. Over here, we have Cool Props Life Size bust of the newborn. And I know the newborn isn't a piece that everybody loves, a lot of people hate hate it from the franchise, but I love the newborn. 
And then over here is Darren Holt's life-size Lord of Darkness bust. This is his Paint Master copy, as a matter of fact, and um, the other Paint Master belongs to Tom Savini. So it's super cool to have a piece that Tom Savini owns. And Darren Holt is just a master sculptor. Over here we have Cinebiquette's One Third Reaper from Blade 2. And they did such a great job on this piece too. As you'll see, like I prefer one third maquettes. I like the size. It has great presence at that scale. And uh, yeah, I just think they look really, really cool. And this guy, the details on him is outstanding. Over here, we'll come over to the Hollywood Collectibles Group Alien Queen. This is a life-size wall hanger. And this is the EX version with the extended inner jaw. Mine arrived super broken and I had to repair it and repaint it. But I'm pretty happy with the way she came out. Then over here we have Sideshow's one-fifth scale Internecevius Raptus or Big Chap statue which I really like the way it looks. It's just too small for me. And I'm going to end up selling that as well. And on the bottom of here, I have a couple of their alien eggs. And then up here we have Zorlosa Creations life-size pumpkin head wall mount, which looks super freaking cool. I love this guy and I love pumpkin head too. Over here in the kitchen, I have Bill Weger's quarter scale Big Chap. Now this is painted by Chase Smith at Little Shop of Horrors. And he did just a killer job on this. And I love this piece so much. It's got such cool presence. And then over here, I got little Sideshow's Evil Apple. Okay, up here is my overflow of action figures. These are mostly NECA. I have about 400 action figures in total. And uh, I typically never take them out of the packaging. Uh, I just kind of like them to leave them new. But I've always loved action figures and I still collect them to this day. But here is my overflow kitchen stash. On my kitchen island, I have uh, some one-third alien pieces. These are some of the heavier pieces, so they're on the island right now. But uh, this is Cool Props one-third dog alien. And this is the EX with the additional head sculpt. But Prime One just knocked this out of the park. Over here is the Cool Props one-third HR Giger maquette. Uh, this is the replica of the statue in Giger's Museum. And over here we have the one-third Omegurai Big Chap. And I love this piece as well. It just came out so freaking cool. Down below here we have Darren Holtz life-size Dracula bat bust from Bram Stoker's Dracula and he did such a killer job on this piece I absolutely love it and it's one of my favorite busts that I have I want more stuff from this movie we're speaking of I have Creation X's wall hanger from Bram Stoker's Dracula which I love that piece as well too and then finally, in the kitchen area is Ozone Studios Ripley Fine Art Print, painted and signed by Olivia. And she did just such a tremendous job on this. I absolutely love it. It's my only art print that I have, but if I'm only going to have one, this is the one for me to get. Over in my living room area, I have Rotten Resin's Cycloptopus. Now this killer piece was 
painted by Gary Tunicliffe, which is obviously famous for his work with Hellraiser and stuff like that. And we come over here and we have Cinema Cat's one third Jason maquette and he came out amazing. I did repaint him and add some details here and there, uh, but I'm overall I'm very, very happy with the way that this piece turned out. And then over here we have Cinema Cat's one third Freddy Krueger with the Infinity Hell base. And man, they just did such a killer job on this. I love that effect. And then over here is Cinema Cat's new life-size Mohawk Gremlin. And I love the base with the printer and gizmo being stuck in there. And they just did such a great job on this piece as well. I freaking love it. Then lastly over here I have the Slaughtered Lamb pub sign from An American Werewolf in London, one of my favorite werewolf movies. And I have the Jeepers Creepers Creeper Beating You license plate. Now let's do a quick look over at my dining room area. And we'll start with the top shelf, which has Andrew Santiago's mother bust from Psycho. This is a life-size bust that he just absolutely killed. We have NECA's Alien Queen and Ripley and Power Loader, which I love this figure set. I just think they look cool. Then we have most of Clive Barker's Tortured Souls series. Now this is the 12 inch figures and it was released by McFarlane a few years ago, but I love the detail on these. Then over here, we have the Hollywood Collectibles Group Alien Facehugger, which I repainted. <clears throat> and actually, like I'm not terribly happy with the way that came out. I'm going to repaint it. Then we have Creation X and their life-size Crypt Keeper bust. And I love this guy as well. I think he looks so freaking cool. And then we have a life-size Mars Attacks bust. I don't know who sculpted this. So unfortunately I can't give credit, but I do love it. Here are some action figure box sets that I have. That I've always loved. And then uh, Monstar's Reanimator Finger Doodle, which I like. Here's some King Diamond tribute stuff and statues. So I love King. Come down here to, most of these box sets are NECA stuff. And then we have just some other Mezco and NECA releases. Some old McFarlane stuff. Worn out Christine. And this is a face hugger that I painted. It was a kit that I painted a long time ago, but I like the way they came out. I got some Mezco 112 figures, some reanimator stuff, a bunch of bunch of miscellaneous stuff really. But all this stuff I really like. Down here in the bottom I have lot of quarter scale figures. Over here we have Kotobukiya's Alien series with the dog and warrior and big chap. And these just came out so good. I love them. Iron Studios Deluxe It. And then uh, an old Mezco Jason. And we have PCS's 
Kessler Wolf. This is the EX version. And I repainted him, but I do like the way he came out. And over here is a quarter scale jack painted by Saul Alvarez, which I freaking love. Some Mondo figures and different releases. Some Living Dead stuff. I'm not big on Living Dead, but I have a couple things. I'll probably be selling those off. Some more NECA box stuff. NECA Queen. This is the Alien Resurrection Queen version, which is basically the same figure, just different painted tones. And then over here is Gary Tunnicliffe's um, Pillar of Souls from Hellraiser 3. And he did this piece and then cast and painted it, and I absolutely love it. Looks so freaking cool. And some other miscellaneous figures down here. Up here we have some more NECA, of course. There's other figures in here too, but mostly NECA. Um, this is Scream Factories. PCS Wolf. This is the exclusive version with the blood on there, which I really like. It's the same as the statue, it's just smaller. Then we have Marmots, Alien. Now they did this release for the 25th anniversary and I still love it. Down here is a whole bunch of Mego figures, all horror related. we have some of the Defo Reel figures, Pennywise and Jason. And we have Fluffy. We have an old McFarlane Freddy. This is the bloody variant. And then we have a Soda Toys pumpkin head. Now this guy, I repainted and turned into a statue and then like I did a little diorama base for him as well. But I'm pretty happy with the way he came out. It's not perfect but I like him better than what he was. And then down here we have some Mezco Chuckies. Alright as we move over to the Detolfs you'll notice that I have action figures, uh, mostly clamshell figures, all stacked behind these Detolfs. Um, so all behind here are all just tons and tons of figures. But over here we have Blitzway's 1-6 uh, scale Ghostbusters 4-pack. And I love this set. The detail on them is crazy. And I have the Ecto-1 on order. And hopefully you should get it in a month or two. Here we have Redman's 1-6 scale Dracula red and blue and I love these pieces as well of course you guys know that I love Bram Stoker's Dracula then down below here we have Sideshow's quarter scale pinhead this is the exclusive version with the lament configuration and below all the action figures uh, behind the details are quarter scale Figures, more NECA quarter scale, uh, mostly Predator and Alien stuff, which you can't get a good look at, but hopefully you can see enough. Next we have Rugia Chronicles Alien Facehugger Specimen, which I love that piece. And then I have the second head sculpt to the Prime 1, one-third dog alien, which makes a killer display just on its own. Below here we have Sideshow's Court of the Dead of Varkas, the Red Death, which I sold all my Court of the Dead stuff, but I kept him just because I felt like he looked so gnarly, but I might be selling him as well. Over here we have life-size 
Hellboy 2 Tooth Fairy painted by Chase Smith at Little Shop of Horrors. Then below that, we have uh, Gecko's Cthulhu Mythos series with Nirlathotep and Cthulhu. And then NECA's Exorcist limited edition box set signed by Linda Blair. You can kind of see the signature on there. And then below that is Trick or Treat Studios Child's Play 2 Chucky. And this is the exclusive Kickstarter version of him. This is Sideshow's legendary scale bust of Meg Mucklebones from Legend. Which I added a gloss coat to that because it wasn't wet enough. I think she looks better now. And then below here we have Kent Kidwell's Half Scale 1979 Nosferatu the Vampire. And this bust was painted by Saul Alvarez. And he did his normal, amazing, stellar job on that. And finally, underneath here, we have Soda Toys Spider Head, which I love this piece. I wish there was more pieces for this guy because it's such a cool creature. I repainted it a little bit, but Soda Toys did a killer job on it. This is Cinema Kets Creature from the Black Lagoon. This is a one-third maquette, and I repainted it. Uh, I felt like uh, I, it was just too bronze for me, um, the way it came from the factory. So I did some repainting on it and then also like on the lizard too, but this is just such a killer piece. I still feel like I would like to go back and redo it a little bit. I want to lessen the red on the lips a little bit, but overall I'm pretty happy with the way he came out. Then behind the creature we have a bunch of Eagle Moss alien statues and I like them because they're small the detail isn't great but they're also inexpensive too and then below that I have a trick-or-treat studios gremlin and I made up some popcorn for him and some 3d glasses but he's a lot of fun I like him all right so here is a couple of 3016 scale figures uh, the first being Myers from H6, and then uh, Leatherface. Leatherface is the deluxe version. And I did a couple of uh, little dioramas for them, but I like the way that these guys came out. And below here is Pure Arts T800 bust. And they did a great job on this, especially for the price point. And there's LEDs for the eyes and the base. And the cool thing about the base is you can switch it up to be a wall mount as well. But I like this guy, although I might be selling it because I have the Prime 1 T800 on order. Then below here is Misshapen Models Life Size Night of the Living Dead Stair Corpse. And uh, man, Misshapen Models did such a great job on this. He's so freaking gnarly. I love him so, so much. And then below here is Biff Bang Pals Talkie Tina from the Twilight Zone and she came out terrific and these are getting harder and harder to find. I think that Trick or Treat Studios has a license for this and is going to come out with a their own version but I don't see how you can beat what Biff Bang Pal did here. Here we have Sideshow's Six Scale Freddy and Jason which I like the way these figures came out and I did uh, some custom dioramas for them as well. I am kind of getting out of the six scale game though. I think I'm going to focus more on statues. Down here is Sideshow's legendary scale bust of Wolf Predator. And while I love the sculpt, there is a lot to be desired about this piece, which I think I'm probably going to be getting rid of. Down here is Mondo's Batman Red Rain. And this is a little known statue i don't hear people talking about it very much but i love it it's based on red rain comics where batman becomes a vampire and hunts vampires 
Then down here we have the troll from Cat's Eye. And pyramid head thing from Silent Hill. Here we have Hot Toys Ripley and their warrior xenomorph. And I know they're from two different movies, but I don't have the big chap. So this is kind of how I have them displayed right now. Coming down, we have Sideshow's Life Size Patient Zero Bust, which they did just a tremendous job on, and it's one of my favorite pieces. And below that, behind here, we have the puzzle box signed by all four of the original Cenobites, which I love that a lot. Then over here, we have more action figures. These are signed. We have Robert England, Freddy, and we have Sid and Bill signed from Devil's Rejects. Then we have Heather signed her Nancy figure and Steve Dash for the Jason and Tim Curry for the Lord of Darkness and then Linda Blair for her Regan. Here we have Sideshow's quarter scale pumpkin head maquette. And this is a piece that I truly love. And I'd sought after it for a long time and I was finally able to score one. And I'm very, very happy that I did. We have NECA's original Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy glove. And Cool Props Life Size Big Chap Bust which came out awesome. They did a killer job on this piece. And down below here, we have Hollywood Collectibles Group Chest Burster, which I repainted. But I love him, he looks rad. And we have Little Shop of Horrors Alien 3 Inner Jaw, which Chase Smith did such a killer job on this. Here is a Freddy Part 3 glove from Nightmares Unlimited. And I love the way that came out. And then I have uh, some quarter scale alien eggs. Uh, this is from a little shop on Etsy. Then I have the life size alien egg from Sideshow, which I completely, uh, I re it was an AVP egg and I redid the base and I added my own thing. I made it a little bit smaller. The base was kind of large and unruly and I wasn't a huge fan of AP, AVP, but I liked the way it came out and I added some gloss here to kind of wetten up the opening there. Here's some six scale Star Wars figures. Uh, we have the Hot Toys Emperor on Throne is the deluxe version and a couple of the Hot Toys Royal Guard. And then we have uh, Sideshow's uh, Vader which uh, came out really cool. And then I did like a separate base for him because the, the stock base was kind of big. And below here we have Connor DeLess's life-size Reverend Kane from Poltergeist 2. And this is a very rare piece. There's only three made that I know of and uh, it's a favorite in my collection. And below here is the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. This is a Hollywood Collectibles Group statue. And uh, below it, I have a, I found like a little throwing star in a, a, a horror shop and I picked that up and then the Bone Dagger is by Factory X. But I love some creeper stuff. Here's uh, Blitzway's six scale Hannibal figures. And um, I really love the way these came out, although the prison uniform one didn't come out so well. It didn't fit in the chair, so I had to make them standing. And in doing that, like I made them a little bit bloody uh, to mimic the scene where he bashed the guard's head in. Below here, we have Sideshow's quarter scale Undying Carcass. And this is the, the exclusive version. And I love this piece. Uh, I wish they had continued on with their the deadline. Um, but so many great 
so many great things that they did back in the day. I wish they, they still did. And back here, of course, like I, I don't want to like, I feel like I'm not giving all my action figures love uh, just because there's so many packed behind there, but um, I just can't, I can't uh, show them all to you guys, which is kind of disappointing because I, I really love the action figures that I have. And down here we have Sideshow's quarter scale Leatherface and he came out freaking amazing as well. But the base is just phenomenal. It's got just a killer diorama of scenes from the film. And uh, Sideshow did a great job on that. Here is Hot Toys Mars Attacks Ambassador and Soldier. And these are just really cool figures. And again, like I love the movie and uh, even like the trading cards from the 60s, like those. Here is Hot Toys uh, Quarter Scale Vader, which uh, came out really great. I, I love this piece. And it is the exclusive version with the alternate display stand but I have them in the force pose, which I like. Then below here we have Sideshow's Quarter Scale Freddy. And uh, this is the exclusive version with the soles. And his base matches uh, the leather face where it has this cool diorama scenes all around the base. But I like this piece as well. So this is Sideshow's 8 scale Valak, which came out really good. I'm very, very happy with this piece. I feel like Sideshow did a great job. And it is the exclusive version. And down here we have Hollywood Collectibles Group Axeman. And uh, I would say that he's probably about 5th scale. Or six scale he's pretty short um, but the detail is amazing on him and then of course I have Hollywood collectibles group uh, virus and antivirus T virus case uh, those pieces are cool like they have LEDs in the virus capsules and it, it lights them up which looks really rad and down here we have raging zombie studios life-size critter and I always loved the 80s Critter movies. And over here, which can barely see them, but these guys are Dutch outcasts, little critters, and little critter baby. I get them in focus. And then below here, we have Mezco's Trick or Treat Sam, which I kind of weathered them and fluffed them up a bit and did a bit of trimming on them to kind of make them look a little bit cooler. But I love me some Trick or Treat Sam. And then finally over here, I used to play guitar. Uh, we were in a band and we toured and everything, but I sold all my equipment except for this guitar because I uh, it's the one I wrote and recorded everything on. But I found this really cool zombie wall hanger mount for it, which I love. And thought you might get a kick out of looking at it too. But it just makes for a cool display for a guitar. Alright guys, that is the collection tour. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I tried to move through it as quick as possible because I knew it was going to be long. But I appreciate you guys sticking around this long. And uh, I personally always love watching other people's collection tours. It's cool to see like what everybody is into and the pieces that they love you kind of get an insight to them as a person because people typically only collect what they're passionate about. Obviously, I'm passionate about horror movies and monsters. I always have been, and I've always loved it, and I don't see that, that ever changing. But um, as always, feel free to leave any questions or comments that you have, and I will be happy to answer them. And also feel free to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications for new videos. And until next time, Happy collecting, and I'll see you guys later.